Network. We're going to be here this morning to show some videos about the charcos that Jonathan makes. Then we'll have some questions and answers. If you, in watching the video, have a question that you want to ask, we ask you please to um, jot your, put your name in the chat, or if you have time, write your question in the chat so you don't forget it, so we can ask you your questions, answer your questions afterwards. So here is the first video. I'm sharing my screen. Yes. And I'm ready to go. Morning, I'm John. I'm here to talk about the book charcas, the box charcas, and with them. First, a little history lesson. What is a charcoal in a box? Well, in the 1920s, when Gandhi was trying to bring the fur industry back to India, which had been taken by the British Empire, put a lot of spinners and weavers out of work, he tried to energize the spinning and weaving. Yeah. First of all, showing that it exists. So one of the things he did was he made a charka that was portable. Now, this in front of me, typical Indian chart of the period. And you can see that's not terribly important. So he introduced at least two contests or races. First one can take a charka that's three to five times faster. The second one was, how can we make it one that's portable? Well, the answer was, and it's a very clever answer, put it in a box. Here we have two box charkas. So the largest in the family and the smallest. I have in my collection six of these, the largest and four sort of coming down to the smallest. So I know that we have boxes of this. They're very clever. Now let's take one of these. Bigger one. This is the first, this, I mean, this is the first one in the early 1920s. I'll tell you what. This, what I've done to the chart of, I've pretty much stuck with the original design, but I made it more friendly. The original ones turn them over, everything would fall out. It was very much a, a job of assembly me now. I made it user friendly. I have taken, I put in ball bearings on the, on the accelerator wheel and ball bearings and changed them out to the, what I call the mouse trap. Everybody else, you know, the mouse bearing because it's mouse trap is just four snaps. In my book, this is the mouse trap. You take a belt to take a wheel that has the 110 to ratio. In other words, you turn this once, spindle tends 100, turns on 10 times. One needs an accelerator wheel, which is one of the clever things of, of this design. And I have, when I have the bearings in here, I put it such that you could change the scope without dismantling. So, and I also add functional lazy cage so that one can plug. No, of course, he, you know, he never applied. The copper just used single fiber. So, which is I did mechanically for that. Now, what an nice idea. In 1907, at Cornell, my parents ran a craft fair. And an Indian grad student, Hal, said, if you can find these, I'll demonstrate it. They had pictures of Cornell from a study of some villages, but no time to get one over here. So my father, a woodworker, you know, Fiber tools made it from the photographs. My only help on that one was in the bearings to the wheels. So, this is the kind of wheel I learned to spin on in 1957. So, this is my, this is my first experience at spinning. Cotton at that time, of course, no market. So, we went around, took everybody's out of their medicine bottle, and reworked that in the punis for the, the Indian guy to demonstrate. He demonstrates in, in August of 1957. So that was three years after the first development. So, what for me? What do we do? Uh, Indian, and of course, was warm. So, all we, we ever had to do there was um, make supply. So, I'm using a constant. I actually provided cotton fiber for my source. 
And I, when I teach this, I think of it as two parts. You can't let the twist get back in the, in the cyber because you can't cheat with your own pull it out. So what you're making, my theory, is very fine pencil ruling, which has no strength here. Then pitch it off and add the twist. Then stop back up and wind on as what have any spindle wheel as a sudden spinning or winding on press is. So this is this is the whole this is what I says after you get after your muscle memory gets going, you do both both episodes at once. So that's spinning. Now, now in our Western world, we spin other things in cotton, like yak, kibiot, um, buffalo, silk blends, and other things. Which, where you want to end up, one wants to end up with a fine, fine fiber. A definition of twist is smaller, of course, than I am. Twists when needs. These wheels in our society now are used many, many different fibers. Like to be spun. Like to we're on a traditional wheel wire an awful lot of treadling. So, wheel, I believe, and those who want to spin most fibers. Demonstrated mostly with cotton. Now, this is the first one. In two pockets. Well, the second model had only one pocket. And then the, some of the other series had no pockets. But all the bigger ones have a way to wind off cane winder built in. We will say for the moment that cane winder, the bigger ones, can be just a cross, which one places an accelerator wheel. Then there's a guide post, guide height, and then one can take just one fiber for the moment, wind on. Here we can wind on right from the lazy cape within the, this lazy cape is not in the original one. It allows you to wind on, as you can see here, we're winding over and there, that's as far as it goes. But one can also, with this wheel, ply. So if I have two fives here, and I wish to ply, I can secondary belt, these wheels are such that you're always clockwise. You don't have to remember which way am I turning to get the S and the Z twist. Always clockwise. If you're doing Z twist, this necessary belt from the top of this pulley goes to the back. So as I, I was spinning Z twist this way, I want to S twist for prime, so I just take this belt and reverse it to the other side. That is I get I turn, then it will be going the other way. Now, to clumsy about this, I can demonstrate. Now, we have it is discovered that if one takes the iron around one's neck on a slippery shirt, I wind on, fly. Now I'm doing something I tell you not to do. Ergonomically, <laughs> shoulder is here. It doesn't go above your head. So one would, fool says you'll come up the side. So one thing needs to be careful about how high it goes. But they're using this for flying. You have a, this is the bigger one. Put it away. later. One takes the spindles in the big one out of the lazy cape, laid it on the bow strap, for lack of a better name. Line up the knob, so the box will close. And with it, and you're ready to pull off. There's no assembly needed, part of the user friendly. So, and then, of course, you start up again, one opens the box, takes out the spindles, and reapplies the belt. No 
know, one other thing we did this wheel. Traditionally, charcoal spindles come needle sharp. In fact, one of Gandhi's um, members, he was supposed, he was, they were supposed to spin a day in public, reinforce the idea of getting seen. In, in, his, in his book, he says in his pockets, among his other tools, he had first aid supply. So for when he saw blood cut off the spindles. So I said, and also he said that if you find the fiber across the point, it would weaken the fiber as it turned and, and worked in the fiber. So I made the point around kinder to the user and fibers, yeah, which gave me another thought. Can you take this out of an airplane? So I went down to Boston Local Airport, one of these rounded spindles, one of the traditional pointed ones. I five different TSA agents, and I asked them, would you let this out of the airplane, this one or this one? And they all did the same, did that. And the one that drew blood, they said no. And this rounded one, which didn't drew blood, they said it was out of the airplane. That's another reason to go for a rounded tip. So you can, I won't care every time, but local parlance, the rounded tip ones, safe. Yeah. So this is the biggest one of the family. I would now say a few words about the little ones. I'll leave that out. You don't need to put that there. Okay, so I'm closing it up. Now the little one. Same idea. Except you don't have to take the spindles up there. They, they live lazy cake. And that one, they get hit by the accelerator wheel. And again, I just need the belt. Put it there and you're ready to start spinning. No must, no fun. Now this one also has oh, another ergonomic feature. If you look at any picture, you that a chair is about the same height of where you're so the idea is your, your arms down like this. On a kitchen table, any table, higher, it will be unhappy after a while, working up higher as opposed to down lower. So this one, and also the little one has a lever that will lock open so you can put it in your lap, a laptop spinning wheel. If you're guild meeting and there's no spare room, you can just sit there without anything in front of you and just spin, or on an airplane, boat or a bus if you ever use them again, just spin. Our lap. So this one, like simpler, we have traded on being user friendly. This is, I took their great idea of the accelerator and the hinge box. And one thing else we did with the, with the book one in England, your, uh, it was that the spindle mount is over on this corner. So the spindle sticks out in space. So many say when you leave your chakra, don't take the spindle off. It's dangerous to have it overhanging. This one moved the spindle mount inboard, so the spindle is within the frame of the box. Make it safer. So those are the things we need to make it more user friendly. Now we also have a boat shovel that will allow you to take. Sample your spindle and put it directly in the boat shuttle, and you can weave weft directly with the winding on anything else. This is now I mentioned this goes back to very earlier spinning wheels in China when they had shuttles with open spindle. So I have just a shuttle shaped 19th century boat shuttle that I've made. I'll find the pocket to hold the spindle. Spindle be. So we have. Of various sizes, which use here now for any fine, any fiber material where you're wet up something, the fiber of, I guess you would call that lace weight. This machine is for making this kind of fiber. Now, this one is slower. This is only 70 to 1 because the wheel ones are smaller. This is 110 to 1 that. Gandhi said it was the correct show. I don't know where he got that number. I guess he did some of the 
they, the big ones he has are that. So we recommend this meal for any fine fibers. We recommend it because it's usually, and you can spend your energies learning how to spin and not boiling and tweaking parts of your Indian fine machine for the tools and the materials they have at hand. But we have ball bearings, things that aren't available in India. So I have to advantage of that at a base. We have these devices and, and with the middle or just as they are. So we introduced this thing. I, I also, along the line, put a little flyer spinning wheel box, which I made for a number of years. And then when I went full time, it became obvious I wanted to get the line, so I remembered my other's box chart. Yeah, and so when we introduced this and think of the naughties about the all the thousand. I like them because that's had to have some the first decade. And they showed this and I did this first because chakras were being imported from India, so I don't necessarily compete with that much. So I built this and our customers said, That's so nice. I should make one books. So so later we went to a store meeting with one of these actually this very one show and see if there was a market market survey there seemed to be a market available for a premium book size we made a large since last 18 years increased the interest in getting other fighters because you now have a usually device that is made for fine fibers thank you do you have any questions also time thank you for your Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, um, I see that we have Allison and Karen here. Do you have some questions? Allison, do you have a question? Or Karen, do you have a question? Okay. So um, you saw Jonathan um, with two different sizes of charkas, the attache. I think he said the ratio on that was about 110 to 1. One time around the main wheel is 110 times at the spindle turns. The book size charka is about 70 to 1. So one time around with the littler, smaller main wheel is 70 times around on the spindle. You'd have to rather treadle yourself into oblivion to do that on a wheel, but um, it's much easier with the charka. And you don't have to go that fast. You can go slower. And I suppose you could really go faster if you uh, turn the main wheel like a maniac. You'd be really zooming along there. So. Okay, if no one has any questions, we'll go on to the second video where Jonathan demonstrates spinning on the charka. Okay, so give me just a minute to share this screen. Second. And here it is. Hello again, here I'm going to show you actually spin the charka. So this is one of our our book charkas of our design, of our modification. So we'll we will set it down and open it up and, and go spinning on it. Now to open it to start it up, we all we have to we put the the secondary belt from the bearing for the spindle back to the accelerator wheel. Now since I'm going to be spinning Z twist clockwise, I said that we always want to be remember we can always turn clockwise. Never have to remember which way we're spinning, and if we want to spin S twist, we reverse this belt. Now we will take one of the spindles, which is probably filled, right into the mount. Take a piece of fiber of cotton. I'm using cotton here, and to start to start it, just lay about. Three or four inches on top of the on the top of fibers, and as we start to draw, it'll pick up fibers. Then we stop and add, and add the twist. And now this is the only time you back up. You have to back up enough to unwind. Well, I will show you. I put in. I didn't tell you, but you sweep forward so the spiral goes down to the point. And you have to have some angle from the point. You cannot spin straight off the point. 
straight angle. What needs to have an angle? Wisdom says it should be 45 degrees from here to here. I just say any angle with the yarn, I'll make it, I'll make pop. Pops across the end. And then we draw it out. Then we stop. Now we have made very fine roving from this sliver. And now we stop. Add the twist. Then we back up enough so that we can then go forward again, wind on to the cup, swoop down, blow we draw out. Now this is different that you only have one hand to draw. So one needs to be aware of not letting the twist get from the roving into the look, you see there is a triangle here or a delta, depending which school you went to, where the fibers are well, I get that. Um, where they come down, and all your interest is in this last, this last stage. Now, when I say you you can't let the twist back. One way to not let the twist back is if you don't, if you hold the viper very loosely, and you let the twist get back in, it will pull it out of your hand. You know it. It talks to you if you listen, telling you when you're having too tight. So then you wind on again, down, on out. Stop. Pinch off ahead of the triangle. Add the twist. Wind up. Wind. Now to get the different size yarn, product, the trick is. You want a larger one if you want a fine one which is what they're making you draw the fiber out so you can pick choose a few a few fibers you can i made sort of a flat plane so i pick just a few fibers to the size yarn i want then i can pinch off and if i want it bigger i can put a hold the whole pack into a into a bigger diameter I'm making a mess of things. I'm making too many stubs. But you can see it's, it's bigger there. Now, if when you first, you can pull out, look, there is a school of thought that says, thin with slubs and pull the slubs out as you draw. I don't tend, I tend to think of that my own way. I try to make it smooth the first time. But there's another school of thought that says, slubs is good. Put that for one, some kind of yarn that be it. But now I'll go through this again. If you if you break it off, you want to start. Just lay it on top. No, no fussing, no bus. And pull it slowly. And when the tip of your fiber gets to the edge of the, in this case, fiber, it'll just pick up. And I'll, I had it. In a bundle still, so I made a bigger piece of yarn. So now we'll go back to opening it up. So I go back to finer yarn I was trying to make. There, there, now we're getting closer to what it is we're doing. Any yarn, any fiber will do where you want the final product. I have enough memory there so I can. The other trick is remember, don't turn this wheel very much during the drawing. Just a little bit, and then the memory of the yarn and the, the half spud will allow you to sort of a charcoal version of park and draft. You have too much spin. I suppose you could say you could overspin here, park, then draft. But I prefer to say just turn this slower. In your hands, Given chance for muscle memory will, in fact, then of course you let it fall back on itself. You've got the amount of twist you want, and then adjust it for your needs. That's basically all there is of these things. Now, the one school of thought is one can think of this thing as a
as a support spindle. Because a support spindle, spinning it in a bucket, if you're having your hand around it, pull it and you're drawing out with just one hand. In this case, this which is also in Hindi, a tackly. This is a charka tackly. In this case, this is the bowl, and you're still, instead of holding your finger around here, you're holding your hand to turn it, and you still just got one hand to draw. So it's still, the, some people call it the long draw, I call it just the one hand draw. Because while it is long, it is also, you just have the one hand to draw, and you don't have the option of cheating to let the twist get back into the rolling. So it's, that is the one thing about point spinning. We only have one hand to draw it. You have to be more careful, more aware of not letting the twist get back into the roving. That, basically all there is, shark spindle spinning. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. That was really interesting. I I wish that I'd been able to capture your arm moving away a little better. You so often went out of sight. But I think it's really interesting because I do the same thing on, on spindle spinning, drop spindles, to make sure that I have enough twist in my fiber that I can keep drafting and the, that the memory and the yarn will keep it safe from falling apart. What did you what did you find most interesting about learning how to spin on a charka? Jonathan? What did I find interesting? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's um very meditative. I mean, it's you become part of the process of converting the fibers into a into a usable yarn. It's very meditative. It's sort of I have said it sometimes, sort of a prayer wheel with a product. Instead of just spinning the the brass drum to set, set your prayer afloat, you spin the wheel and you get the prayer afloat and also Get yarn. Get yarn. <laughs> <It'd be better. laughs> In fact, we sent one charka, to one journey wheel to Tibet, and the person that took it with her, who was a, a Buddhist, Buddhist nun. nun, had a prayer written on the on the main wheel. So as she spun, every time the wheel spun, the prayer went around. So I mean, some people take it to the extreme and put the prayer on the wheel. I've never had anyone asked me to engrave a prayer on the main wheel, but I'm not going to say that. It could be done, but who knows? Who knows, right. But it's very magical and, and relaxing to see something in your hand modified the way it is when you spin. That's true of any spinning, but we try to make it that the tool, the machine you use, is part of the process instead of you might say the enemy to which you have to keep pruning, turning and tuning, that it's become part of the whole process. Right. So you become very one with the universe. You're right that it, all spinning is really very contemplative. Um, it's it's quiet. It's peaceful. It's round. It goes around. I think it's very very peaceful and calm. Does anyone have any questions? I do, Sheila. Um, what materials could you spin on this? What would you recommend? Jonathan, why don't you answer that? Yeah, um, any material that wants to end up being a fine lace weight yarn. So, the, so silks. I mean, if you're going to make an Orenberg, is that the way you pronounce it? Orenberg shawl. Yeah. Orenberg shawl. This would be the ideal machine to use to get that very fine fiber that you need. Anything that's fine, any of the I guess you say luxury fibers, the kivet, camel down, yak, yak. Like an alpaca. Maybe? I'm sorry. Like an alpaca, maybe, or. Um, I don't know about alpaca. I've never tried okay. that. Uh, you can spin a very fine wool or a fine wool blend, wool blend, wool and silk, or perhaps uh, merino and cashmere, something like that. Uh, I think I think where. Um, where the, the end product is something really, really fine. That's, uh, that's the clue. Lace weight or cobweb even. Um, Maybe even frog hair, but I mean, <laughs> fine, fine. Any fiber that wants to be a fine yarn, okay. I would put it that way. Instead of the name of the yarn, just the, the end result diameter 
if the fiber you're using wants or you want it to be and it wants to be that size, mm -hmm. you need a lot of twist per inch. Yeah. The smaller physics of it, the smaller the diameter, the product, the more twist per inch there are needed to hold it together. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend a wool like a rougher wool like Romney or something like that. Um, I think you can't get that fine enough um, and consistently fine enough to do. Although having said that now, somebody will show me that you can. But <laughs> that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Show me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, but I, but I think it's mostly, it's obviously perfect for cotton um, and maybe bamboo as well, or a cotton and something blend if you have it. Um, it perhaps, uh, Angora, I think yes. Uh, although Angora also can be done on a drop spindle or a support spindle, so lots of choices there. We need to ha um, have somebody make up a fiber kit with lots of different samples. Would that be lovely? Um, yeah. We've I had guess... people come to shows with a, a bucket full of little bags of everything they have to try it. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Try them all. You know, she tried this one and this one. She went through yeah. a dozen more of her favorite finer fibers. It's a good way to figure it out. I didn't get a list of them all, but I should have asked her for a list so I yeah. can answer your question. But yeah, I was gonna say, um, that's good information though. Um, also, as far as beginners, would this be appropriate for someone who hasn't spun before? Or where do you think they should start if they want to start with it? You have no bad habits to unlearn. That's true. For example, <laughs> you can't say, I can't do it one handed you've never done it one-handed or two-handed. You enter with a clean slate. So I think that any drop spindle, point spindle wheels or flyer wheels, it doesn't matter. It's just you enter it with an open mind and a childlike curiosity and just do it. Yeah. It'll be a pain the first time you try it, especially if you've got bad habits. Like if you're a <laughs> flyer wheel spinner, a lot of people let the twist get back in the roving and then and then they can't get it out. So you have to learn if you go from a flyer to pointed wheel that um, you can't cheat. You have to hold the fiber very loosely, it's like a, a butterfly or something. The, your fiber you're using is very loose and you just, no death grips and you just be very gentle, make sure the twist is ahead of the, the bundle. That's a really yeah. the, the thing you really have to be a little more careful about because you don't have the option to overcome your enthusiasm. <laughs> and I guess that answers other, your question. Yes, it does. And um, one more, if you don't mind. The, uh, how much can you spin on it in one session or hour? How much will it hold on? I don't know if the oh, correct bobbin? word is right. Yes, yeah, bobbin or not, or if there's a different word for what a bobbin would be on it. Or well, These are called spindles. Or... Yeah, okay. spindles. Sorry. Um, this is, well, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a, sort of a half full spindle. You can okay. yeah. sort of just dive all the way down. You can get um, 10 or 15 grams of weight, and it depends how fine the yarn, the fiber is, and how, how long that is. But it's like this is sort of thread size. So look, there's a lot of length on one of these guys when it's, well, that's a, they hold a lot of length, not a lot of weight. Okay. And we also, um, at the request of many customers, make a plying spindle so that, as Jonathan demonstrated, you can ply on the charca. And here's the cup, here's the plying spindle. So it's a, it's is, an inch long or gives you, so you can put a, put a disc to disc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah let's you see get that. more on a plying spindle. So this okay. would be great for spinning your singles. This would be great for plying on. This fits into the Charka shuttle. The flying spindle does not because it's too long. Its nose is too long. So. But so. Are that's good to know. You can ply on it too. That's a good. That's a good thing to know too. Yeah. About, like plying too. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point. Um, there is no tension device on the Charka. You have to provide the tension. For the plying. For the plying, not for spinning. <laughs> People are already tense <laughs> about spinning. But um, you saw Jonathan demonstrate by putting it around his neck. 
there's a video of someone who came up with this um, process on YouTube. Uh, so if you look for plying on a charka on YouTube, you can find it. But we include a link in the instructions that come, uh, the user guide that comes with the charka on how to find it. So it, it's really quite helpful. And it is just the right amount of tension because it has to go up and around. And of course, you can add tension with your hands, your non-turning hands as you, yeah. as it flies. Oh, okay. Oh, so all I need to do is to get started is get a charka. Get a charka, yes. You Number one. Get one. <laughs> oh, really? You might know that be, that might be very helpful. And then if also some fiber. Fine, you know, if your your yeah. end goal is a fine diameter yarn, you need something that spins fast with a point yeah. on it. Of course, we're we're partial to our wounds we make. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. If you wanted to get a if you wanted to get um, Jonathan must have mentioned the ratios of uh, the larger charka the attaché charka 100 to 110 to one that means one time around the main wheel is 110 times around on the spindle um, and even the smaller one the book size charka is 70 to one 70 so once around the main wheel is 70 times around the spindle and as I said earlier you'd have to treadle yourself into oblivion on your spinning wheel to get that high a ratio. So. And we have a, I do have a question. Um, Allison asked, do you have any advice on how to start the yarn on the spindle? Sure. Jonathan, do you want to? How do you mean, how do I start a fresh spindle? Yep. And, Al and Allison, I've unmuted you in case you would like to clarify. You'd have, just have to unmute yourself well, yeah. to be able to ask. Well, I have found if you just if you put the spindle in the, in the, well, why don't I do it? Yeah. Here's a. She said yes, fresh spindle. Okay, can you see the charka? Let me, let me put this belt back on. Have... Can you see the charka? Yes, we can see the charka. Okay, good. Yeah, let me get this belt on. And a, a empty spindle in the mount. I have found if you just take a length of something, that you want, doesn't matter what, and just sort of lay it back in the corner of the, between the, the shaft and the disc and start turning the wheel, it grabs on and then you have, then, then you have your start. Then I'll, I'll turn it. Now you can see the, I've never tried this before. <laughs> Don't try this at home, right? <laughs> well, well, if, I just, if I just lay the fiber sort of back there and start turning this, it'll ju it just picks it, it just grabs it. And that's all there was to starting. Did you see that or should I try it again? Yeah. That's incredible. That's so much easier than um, some spinning wheels. I mean, this is a, sort of the same thing as starting the fiber onto the, on the slide or the roving. It just, you just lay it there, and as it, it seems for, for no good reason at all to pick it up. One just take it. And Allison okay. says, um, perfect. I never would have thought of that. Good. Okay. Great. A new trick. And can I ask, what size torque is that one? Is it the, is like book or the? That's the book. What size? The book size? It's the size of a collegiate dictionary when it's folded up. Okay. If you remember dictionaries before. <laughs> Before, yeah. So if you let me just close it up. It's um the size of a laptop. <laughs> it's the size of a Webster's College Dictionary. Okay. You can put it on the bookshelf. The Indian ones actually have a spine to them and boards, so it actually looks like a book. Oh. Here's I a have them. Um, I have squared it up. But here's a book to demonstrate the empire of cotton. Oh, this is, okay. here. Okay, yeah, so perfect, yeah. It's size, of, oh, you want it for size, yeah. Definitely could travel with that, too. Absolutely. Go so great in your motorcycle. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah. Does anyone else have any questions, too? Does anyone else have a motorcycle? <laughs> any other questions out there? Having... Any thoughts? Um, Allison, I hope you will um, try a charka soon. Uh, does anyone in your area have one that you might try? 
Okay, Allison's being quiet. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't see anything there. Um, so next we're going to move on to where we're going to be able to see the Bosworth boat shuttles and also the Charcas um, in a live shopping kind of situation. So if you'd like to join us, you can find the link to this event at our website, which is yarnsey.com. And if you will look also on Facebook, we'll also include the link to where you can join the room as well to come in and ask questions or see more about it, um, learn more about it on both of those items. So if you're a spinner and or a weaver or someone just interested maybe in starting spinning, um, this might be a good opportunity to kind of get more information there. Um, Allison did respond. She said, I owned one and sold it. I just bought a used Bosworth from Ravelry and it will be here on Monday. Okay. So well, congratulations. If you have any questions, Allison, please don't hesitate to contact us directly. We'll be glad to help you.